Thanks for joining me. This is Danny, and welcome back to my F2B Omnia series, episode number 11, in which we are going to be setting up automated ore doubling and other processing of things coming in from our quarry in a different dimension and then automatically brought into our refined storage system in this dimension. So let's get started. So we're going to need a network receiver and a network transmitter and also a network card. Now altogether, this required seven advanced processors. So that's seven diamonds and then six ender pearls, two construction cores and two destruction cores. So, so much iron. And then we're also gonna set up a bunch of compacting drawers for the ingots that are going to be after they're processed. And we're going to be using silence mechanisms to process the ores and double them. I wanted to set up the compacting drawers in here. So I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the supports on this side. <laughs> so this, if in case you don't know, if you weren't here, this is basically the little my little copper age build that brings us into the mining dimension. And uh, there's kind of a parallel build in the mining dimension. This is where all of our stuff is coming in from the quarry. It's quarrying out a huge, huge area. It's basically gonna be running forever, well, kind of. Not really, but. Um, everything is just coming in, it's getting dumped in these drawers, and if I ever want anything, I have to come here to get it. That's what we're going to change today. Starting from the end and working our way backwards, when we're done, all of these compacting drawers will be filled with ingots. Oh, and there's more. Wait, there's more. Um, there's actually a total of 13 different types of ingots or 13 different types of ores that are going to get us ingots. I think it's enough to have 12 compacting drawers. Um, most of these things we're going to have in very small quantities. Or not most of them, but a lot of them are going to be in very small qu quantities. So we'll just have to decide which 12 we want to put in these compacting drawers. And then I'm also going to hit them with a quantifier key. Of course, if I had a drawer controller on this, I could just hit the controller instead of having to do all three of those. And then I'm going to set up a drawer controller, which our refined storage system is going to hook into. So I'm going to just put that down here. Oh, and look, we've got cave. <laughs> we've, we've got refined storage access right there. So yay. So I'm just going to put that there. And then we'll put an external storage on that. There's our external storage. I actually had to run into the mining dimension to get redstone <laughs> in order to make that. So let's just put this external storage on the side. Can I do that from here? Yeah, there we go. We're going to set this priority up kind of high. I don't know, just make sure it's higher than anything else. And find some cables to throw in there. OK, so now anything that's in this set of storage drawers, our system will have access to. How am I doing this? OK, I just have a few different. OK. Because they're locked, our system cannot put anything in these drawers unless I already in, unless I put it in there manually. As long as I'm updating my refined storage stuff, I am going to make myself a wireless crafting grid because I want one. All right, so I need a crafting grid, and then I can make that into a wireless crafting grid. Now that I have ender pearls, I can do all this kind of stuff. Great. And then I need to make the transmitter. So another machine casing. Oh, okay. Must be placed on cable. All right, where do I want to put this? Oh, I'm definitely going to need some upgrades for this. Some range upgrades. Like so. Oh, it does connect to the side. Hmm, okay. Put the range upgrades in there. We've now got a 32 block range. So now I can... Uh, network not found. Okay, I have to shift right click. Okay. No wireless transmitter in range. Okay, <laughs> so the... Yeah, all right. We'll probably have to set up a few of those antennas. In fact, it might actually be... Oh, it's out of energy. I have to charge it too. Right, right, right. It might actually... might actually be cheaper to just have antennas all over the place since this network is so big. Can I just put it in here? Yeah. Oh! Holy cow, that's like instantaneous. Okay. Okay, there's the range. All right, yay! So I have access to that kind of stuff now. Nice. So now I'm gonna fill up these drawers with every, th I'm gonna take out all the ingots that are in the system actually and put them in here. 
I noticed a nice little upgrade to refined storage. So you know how I have things sorted by number of items? If I am pulling items out of here, it doesn't resort until I let go of the shift key. That's really nice. So you don't have I don't have to worry about things jumping around while I'm trying to pull out a bunch of a single item. I actually turned off this for now. I just set it to only work with redstone signal just so that I can tell by looking in my system what I haven't moved in there yet and what we have the most of. That's kind of an important thing too. I want to see what we have the most of and put that in there. Those are all set. So anything that comes into our system will end up in these drawers. I'm going to set this to turn back on. And now if we look in here, we should see all this stuff and lots and lots of nuggets. Lots of lots of lots of nuggets, all the ingots, and then we'll also see the blocks in here as well. So hooray! I added another wall over here of storage drawers of all the other stuff we're getting from our quarry because this stuff will overwhelm our system definitely if we don't have a place for it. Um, so this is all the different stone-like blocks, and then we've got three different types of uranium. Well, four, I guess. We've got our raw uranium, poor, medium, or whatever, or just regular, and then dense, and then we also have the uranium ingots. So I'm putting all those in one, and then these are just other things um, that we're getting from the quarry, lapis and such, and then these are like real valuable things. So diamonds, emeralds, and um, dimensional shards. Why is there a mining dimension portal up there? Weird. That must have spawned in at some point while I was coming back. Um, I've connected those to this network just using drim, drim, <laughs> trim, drawer trim, oak trim. So that is now all in our system. So if, when any of this stuff comes in our system, it will go in here. And if we have too much of it, it'll be voided because all of these have void drawers, except for this one. I do not want a void drawer on that. If we fill up this drawer, then I'm going to just add an upgrade to it. I'm going to add upgrades, upgrades to all these other drawers too, but currently I have a whole bunch of upgrades tied up in here. Um, lots of diamond and, and gold, yeah, mostly gold upgrades. And this drawer is going to be vacated, <laughs> so I'm going to take all those dra drawer upgrades when I get it. And I think that covers everything that we're getting. So once we set this thing up, all the stuff will end up going in those drawers. And then the, except for the ores. So that's what we have to deal with now is how to double those ores. Oh, it's you, huh? <sighs> Plague tome. I think I want this because at some point I might want to fight the Black Death. How many emeralds? 32. I have 45. Oh boy, okay. We're, I'm going to do it. It's the only thing I want from him, so I might kill him um, after this. There has been a change in plans. Apparently, refined storage network transmitters and receivers no longer support interdimensional uh, travel. Fortunately, I found another way in this pack that I was not aware of before, and that is from the mod called Dim Storage, Dimensional Storage. This is basically ender chests, and they have a frequency you can make them public or private and you give them a frequency and any other chest that has the same frequency has the same inventory nice and there is a handheld one too which i will definitely be making that is the dimensional tablet and it's basically a handheld inventory that gives you access to this so i can use that to send things back home whenever i'm whenever i'm out like resource gathering or whatever i might be doing or anytime my inventory is over full and I'm away from home. So I'm actually going to just, I'm kind of tearing all this stuff down because we're rebuilding it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to filter, I'm going to use mechanisms, logistics to filter the stuff coming out of that chest. And, um, B, I don't want to hit you and then have all your friends come attack me. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to filter all the ores to go into the ore doubling system 
and then everything else is just going to go into the dimensional chest and then on the other side of things I'm going to have the dimensional chest going into the refined storage system dimensional tablet Hooray! so I actually have to right click on a dimensional chest with this tablet in order to link it um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the dimensional chests and I'm going to put it <laughs> here I'm basically gonna replace this chest with it because why not um, that chest is the thing that was coming in from our old ore doubling system, and there is a importer on top of it. So if I put that there, then, oh, shift right click, linked to chest, and then no matter where I am, I can send stuff home by going like that. And it ended up in our refined storage system because it went into this chest, and then it got pulled into our refined storage system. So if we look in here, we should see that well, there's two stripped logs there, but yeah. Um, let's just do that again, just to make sure. We know there were no stripped logs <laughs> in our refined storage system. And now there are two. Hooray! So that's how that's going to work. So we should be able to do this in the other dimension. I'm just going to put it here. That's not going to be its permanent home. But if we put something in there, it gets pulled into our refined storage system, even though we have no access to our refined storage system in this dimension. Hooray! And of course... It does need to be chunk loaded. We do have to make sure that other end is chunk loaded so that refined storage is loaded and, and can pull it. If it's not, that's no big deal either because then the stuff will just sit in this chest until we get close enough to home <laughs> where it gets chunk loaded and then it pulls everything out of the dimension chest. So yeah, that's gonna work beautifully. So I am actually gonna tape up all these drawers and probably that chest too and move them. Actually, I could probably use the mechanism boxes for those. Ooh. cardboard boxes and then I don't have to waste resources oops oh yeah look at that all right <laughs> just to get these out of the way because this is where I'm gonna put the ore doubling setup right here right, uh, <laughs> right here so this is how this is gonna work so we can a little bit more than double our ores with silence mechanisms um, by ha by crushing it twice and then running it through a furnace and then sending it into our dimensional chest there are some ores, like osmium for instance, that do not allow us to crush twice. So that will just go directly into this crusher and then down into that electric furnace. So what we're going to do is we're going to use two logistic sorters. Um, one of these we're going to be pulling out of this chest, which is basically everything coming from the quarry. I'm going to clear that out. I'm going to clear out all the filters and stuff. And what's going to happen is most of the ores will come into this one. There's one issue though, and that is that sometimes we get cobblestone with the first crushing. So I didn't give myself enough room here to do this. Let's see. Let's uh, get rid of that and that. And what we're going to do is put my jetpack on so that I can hover up here. What? And we're going to put the logistics sorter up there. And then we're going to run pipes <laughs> going over there. Hopefully, we can't see that from the outside. Okay, good. Oh boy, so this is going to be kind of messy. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take. <laughs> because this is such a tight squeeze in here, I'm going to take my configurator, which is already set to configure items, right? And I'm going to just remove these connections. Oh, no, it's set to configure energy. What? I thought, okay, heat. I'm hitting the N key because that's my, that's what I have it bound to. I don't know. You might have to change that if you want something different. So we just shift right click the edges of those to make to basically turn them off and then what we're going to do is we're going to make this color different so let's make that blue i guess so up here in the configure in the logistic sorter i'm going to we're going to auto output so that it's going to eject everything um to color none so this is a color none <laughs> there's no color there so that means that anything that's not filters is, is going to go there. But then we're going to add a filter. And I don't have any cobble. Can I grab it out of 
No. Okay, so I gotta grab a piece of cobblestone from my storage drawers over here. Item stack cobblestone. And we're going to set this to blue. And we're gonna save. So cobblestone, any cobblestone that comes out of that filter is gonna be tagged with the color blue, which is going to cause it to come down here and go into that. This we don't want a connection there. Okay. So cobblestone is gonna go down there because it's blue. Everything else is gonna go over here. Cool. And then everything that comes out of this crusher is going to go into the furnace. There's no need for a filter there. So we're just going to disable that. And then we're going to set this to pull. So it's just going to pull, put it down there, basically like a hopper, except without an inventory. And we're going to kind of do the same thing here. Again, we want, we want to dis. You know what? We we could actually save <laughs> save ourselves that pipe by coloring this blue and setting this to pull only and it'll so anything that comes out of here is already coming out on blue. It'll end up going directly into that. It has nowhere else it can go. I don't think it'll be able to go up there, but just to be safe, let's change that color. To green and then in here we'll make the default color green so anything that isn't blue is gonna be green it's gonna go over here anything that comes out of here should end up going directly in there and this of course is our dimensional chest that goes back home so in here we're gonna do something similar this is where most of our ores are gonna go in this is where just osmium is gonna go and that's gonna be everything else so let's give this a color blue this is a color green. Now this is a different network. This is not going to be touching those pipes in there. So we don't care what the color, so we don't have to worry about conflicting colors. And just to be explicit about it, let's give this a color too. We'll call that cyan. So then if we go over here, we're going to do something similar. I'm going to clear all these filters and we're going to make this default color cyan. So anything that doesn't have a filter is going to be cyan. So uh, we're going to need in my inventory, <laughs> I'm going to need every ore that we're going to be processing. Item stack iron is going to go to blue. And then I just do this. I'm going to do this with every, <laughs> every ore except osmium, which is going to be green. So blue, blue, green. Okay, I've got all the filters in there. A lot of filters. I think there's 13. I'm going to connect these. And we'll just <laughs> make this a little less pretty, I guess. Oh no! Uh, wait, how am I out? I had so many. Okay, it should be connected. So now if I put this uranium in here, it should be blue. And it should go over there. Yes, perfect. So that's over here. It's ready to get smelted. Now, what I'm wondering is if I now put, like, let's say, iron in there, will it just sit in that chest? That's what I'm hoping. Yes. So it just sits in the chest because it has nowhere to put it. But if I put the spruce log in here, it's not pulling it because we need to say auto eject. Okay, so the log goes into cyan, but this guy is flagged for blue, and it can't go into blue because there's something in there already. Perfect. Okay, so now if I pull this out, we should see yes. Nice. And if I put osmium in there, uh, osmium, where are you? There you are. If we put osmium in there... So if for whatever reason this system doesn't keep up with the quarry, which it will, but if it doesn't, then stuff will just sit in the chest and wait until it's ready, which is totally fine. 
And then everything else will go in here and it'll end up in that storage drawer network. So now I just got to get power to these guys. And it's going to be a challenge because I want to try to figure out how to do it in a way that's going to be pretty. Well, uh, not ugly anyway. For power, I'm going to use dimensional cells from RF tools just because we can use them interdimensionally. So this is, they are both link number one. So wherever I put this dimensional cell, if I give it that same card, it's going to be linked to the same power. And it's actually going to extend our power too. So we can now store 2 million RF altogether in our network with these two cells, even though they will be located in different places. Well, it's not entirely pretty. It's functional though. We're actually making some iron dust and it's getting sent back home. Let's start out small by grabbing maybe this one. Box that up. Actually, this isn't really starting out small. This is kind of big, but whatever, we'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, I can always cardboard box it up again. I'll, I'll have that ready in my inventory, except that I have to do it with an empty hand, so I can't. Uh, so we should see things being pulled. Lots of stuff going into the, <laughs> the ender chest thingy. Coal, yes. The coal is being sent home. It's getting picked up slowly. We probably are going to want a speed upgrade on, <laughs> or maybe multiple speed upgrades on that importer. But that's okay. That's okay for now. Um, if this chest gets full, or the chest that's going to be there, the quarry will just stop and wait for it. So that's not a big deal. I'm not terribly worried about that. We've got our iron ore chunks there being crushed. We've got our iron ore being crushed in here. Um, the, our next step is going to be upgrading these machines, but that's going to be a whole nother episode. <laughs> nice. So this is working. I'd like to see this thing produce some cobblestone just to see what happens. Because cobblestone will break the system if it doesn't get caught. Because what will happen is the cobblestone will go into the other crusher, it will become gravel, and then it'll come in here and it'll just sit in the furnace and be like, I, I can't really do anything in here. Cobblestone! There it is! <laughs> I waited here for you guys for cobblestone, just so that I could show you that it works. I got a stack upgrade now in my refined storage system um, importer, so now the stuff's coming in much faster, <laughs> as we can see. Lots of dirt, lots of iron, and I just put the whole set of drawers up here and the drawer controller. All the blocks and stuff are pulled. The only thing left is all of these ores. So I think one of the things that we're going to work on next time is oil ref refining for silence mechanisms um, because that's what we're going to need to do in order to get the speed upgrades that we need for the, this, mostly the second crusher because this process seems to take the longest because this is getting backed up here and the furnace is spending most of its time waiting. So I think if we upgrade just this, that's going to speed things up quite a bit. Um, but we'll probably upgrade everything and make it go crazy crazy fast and we'll have stuff just pouring in but before we leave today i have something exciting i want to do <laughs> so so i have this jetpack right it allows me to fly when i'm wearing it but i also have this armor which has really nice features it gives me speed it gives me step assist but only if i'm wearing the whole thing and of course if i have the jetpack on I can't be wearing the whole thing, so then I lose those things, those, those features. So now I'm really slow. Um, I want, a, I want flight. I want creative flight. I think we have diamonds. We have no, not quite enough gold. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see if we can do this. So I collected, whoops, an elytra while I was out in the in the end, of course. And with that, we can make an angel ring. Four blocks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at this. This isn't even isn't even all that expensive. It's a lot of diamonds. A lot of diamonds for sure. But uh, do I have enough diamonds? That's the big question. I do. I have more than enough diamonds. So we got ourselves a diamond ring. Completely useless, as far as I know. <laughs> this is not completely useless, as far as I know. Um, because that, here, let's take the jetpack off, gives us creative flight if we put it in our curios. Yes. And it is totally free. 
It is totally free. It requires nothing. So I just forever, now and forever, from this point forward, have creative flight. Hooray! So we have step assist now, we have fast walking and sprinting, and we have creative flight. Awesome! So we got our angel ring. That's done. No question. <laughs> no question mark needed. That's done. Ore processing. That's done. Um, I have to wait until it finishes processing all those ores before I can start up the quarry. Actually, that's not true. That's not true. I can actually start up the quarry right now. Let's start up the quarry, because why not? And then that'll just keep running. Until this chest is full. And it's going to run really, really fast. Look at that. <laughs> because this thing is full of power. And so is that. So now we can fly over there and look. We can see how fast that thing is breaking blocks. Now that's going to slow down eventually. Because we only have that one s set of solar panels. It's an advanced solar panel. But it's just one that's powering this. Ooh, I'm lagging a little. And look at this stuff just pouring in. Nice. Um, now the ores are just going to sit there because it's not going to let any other ores in until it's finished with all of the iron ore. So we definitely need to speed up that process. But look at all the cobblestone. Stack upgrade is definitely keeping up with that. That's not a problem at all. Nice. All right, let's go back to our list. Oops. Oh my gosh, it's nice to have creative flight again. Woohoo! It's so easy. It's so much it's so much more graceful than a jetpack, or at least th than the mechanism one anyway. Let's break this sign. So rats, I don't know if I'm going to do iron jetpacks. But we are definitely going to do rats sometime soon. Maybe iron jetpacks because it'll give us much faster transport. Like it'll be way faster than creative flight. But we're definitely going to do Batania soon. Um, but we want to do silence mechanism upgrades. Um, w upgrades. Wait, up <laughs> upgrades, which is going to require um, oil processing, which will also give us another power source. So we're going to get a power source out of it, and we're going to get materials we need to do the upgrades for silence mechanisms. So I think I'm going to do that next time. Um, we're going to play Batania, but before... Before we do it, or maybe in that same ex episode, I'm going to build a Greek garden up here. And I kind of already have the plans in my head that I'm going to do here um, to make it look kind of like a Greek, well, garden. <laughs> and that'll be our Batania space. That's where we're going to play Batania. And this, I may find a different place for that down there because that's where all of our other aura, our nature's aura stuff is. And then we're going to move into the Middle Ages, do a Middle Age build. Enderman farm, a trader grinder. <laughs> I talked a little bit about doing a trader garden last time, but I've a trader grinder last time, but I've changed my mind on that a little bit. What I would like to do, and I have no idea whatsoever how I'm going to do this or even if it's possible, but I'm going to I'm brainstorming some ideas on how to get it so that if any traders appear in the area, that somehow they get carried away somewhere, like to some central location. Um, away from me so I don't have to listen to them. But so I can still go over there and trade with them. And then if I decide that I don't like them, I can maybe press some button and then they will go away. We'll, we'll just say go away. Um, I don't know how to do that yet, but I'm wondering if maybe we can do it with... Uh, computer Computers? I don't know. Can turtles carry entities around? I don't know if they can. Maybe they can throw a boat at it or something. I don't know. I have no idea. I really have no idea. So we'll. I, I'm going to do some more looking around about that. But next time, um, we're going to be doing silence mechanism or processing or oil processing, which is going to get us into upgrades and some power gen. Although we, our power system is actually keeping up really well, really amazingly well right now. But we're going to want more power. I'm sure. I'm sure of it at some point. So I hope you join me for that. If you do have any questions, comments, ideas, or whatever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this, of course, don't forget to click the like button and join me next time. And look at me, creative flying. Yay!